What's going on? It's MCZX, and this is the Smart Kingdom, and welcome to the G1 Climax 28 Recap Nights 13 through 16. Listen, a lot has went on in night 16 and 15, and I, we need to just talk about it because uh, so much, so much has happened. But we have to talk about night 13. So first and foremost. Start with Battle of Fale, six points versus Michael Elgin with four points. Uh, you know what time it is. You ready for it? It's coming. Them damn Tongan. It's damn Tongan time. Fale pushes Elgin into the ref, which this happens in every firing squad match. It's it's an ongoing theme here. Uh, Elgin suplexes. He suplexes Loa. And he body slams Fale. Elgin goes for an aerial move. I don't know why the hell he did this. Until Tama hits Elgin with a chair for the DQ. Now remember, if you only see two Tongans, the third is someone lurking in the shadows. Elgin has six points. Next, Togi Hamakabe with four points versus Hangman Page with two points. Finish went like this. Makabe hits a stiff lariat after Page's super kick. And Makabe hits another lariat. And he's about to go for one more. But he meets a buckshot lariat by Paige. And Paige hits the rite of passage for the win. This is such a match of pride because both these men are eliminated from the G1. But Paige just beat a former IWGP champion and a former G1 Climax winner. It is a good look for Paige's stock. Let's go, Hangman. Suzuki is Hangman's next challenge at night 15. Next, Jay White. With eight points versus Yoshihashi, two points. Yoshihashi, I mean, come on, come on now. You, you really think Yoshihashi's beating Jay White? He's, he's not, he's boring, he's boring. Yoshihashi attempts to go for karma, but Jay reverses it. It is the Blade Runner for two more points and bringing his total to 10. Next, Tanahashi versus Evil. Tanahashi with 10 points, Evil with eight points. So, this was a very pro Tanahashi crowd. I enjoyed this match. Tanahashi hits the first high fly flow, but he misses the second. Tanahashi starts grabbing his bicep, looking like he may have re-injured it. I'm like, that's not good, because I feel like Okada may take advantage of that in his final night. Anywho, Evil hits a darkness fall. Tana kicks out. Evil hits a sick lariat. Tana kicks out. Evil goes for everything is evil, but Tanahashi reverses it. Um, for a dragon suplex. He's trying to go for a dragon suplex, but Evil tries to break out of that, and he does, and he goes for everything is evil again until Tanahashi reverses it into everything is evil, Tanahashi edition. And then Tanahashi hit the turnbuckle. He went up, hit a high fly flow for the win. Simply amazing. The man cannot lose. Tanahashi is now at 12 points. Your boy is great. And... Finally, in the main event of night 13, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm not sure if this is the trilogy or the, or the final match because it doesn't feel like it because I think they wrestled more than three times. But Okada with eight points versus Suzuki with eight points. Suzuki needs to win this match in order to stay alive in the G1, and the same goes for Okada. So they were just, this was very physical. Very hard hitting, like any Suzuki match is. Uh, the finish was simple. Okada did a Suzuki sleeper, and he went for the Gotch style power driver. I'm like, oh, you gonna beat him with his own move? But Suzuki went for the Tombstone. They're reversing each other's stuff, and Okada reverses it into a Gotch Tombstone power driver. He goes for the Rainmaker, but Suzuki fights out of it until Okada hits. I guess this is his new setup for his um. Rainmaker, a spinning Rainmaker, and then he picks up Suzuki, hits OG Rainmaker, wins the match, five in a row. Suzuki is eliminated from the G1 Climax. Unbelievable. Night 14 of the B Block, let's talk about it. Sonata versus Yano, possibly one of my favorite matches of uh, this night because it was so fun. I like a good comedy match when you can deliver one. Uh, Yano attacks Sonata before the match, which rarely happens. He tried to um, he tried to hog tie Sonata for a count out. That didn't work. He tried the Paradise Lock, but he just you know tied him up instead. So Sonata then Paradise locks Yano outside, and 
I'm figuring easy count off victory. But Rocky Romero gets called by Yano to help him. He does. And then Sonata Paradise locks Yano to the guardrail this time and tapes it. Then Rocky tries to help again, except he also gets put into the Paradise Lock by Sonata. And then Sonata puts his headset back on and just like taps him on the back. It's like, all right, continue to commentate. Sonata wins via count out. Best match ever. Sonata now has eight points. Next up, it's. Them, them, Tongans. It's them Tongans time, baby. It's Tama Tonga with four points versus Hiroki Goto with four points. And this one is just like every other Tongan match you've seen. Uh, the ref gets knocked down and Loa gets in to do some damage. He, hits a, he gets in and hits a running power slam and... Goto rallies after the Tongans tried to do guerrilla warfare. He breaks out of that. Goto hits an Oshi Goroshi. The ref's back up. Goto hits a GTR. And then Fale pulls the ref out of the ring and throws him into the barricade. So that should be a DQ right there. But, you know, New Japan. It's kind of lenient sometimes. Uh, Fale hits a grenade on Goto. And then he throws Red Shoes in the ring, who's just, I guess, somewhere around ringside. And tells him to make the count. Red Shoes... You know, he looks like he's about to count. He looks around, and he flips off the Tongans once again and throws out the match. Goto is now at six points. So many DQs in this G1, but but I'm loving it because because they're making a statement. Firing Squad is here, baby. They're here. Juice Robinson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Juice with four points. ZSJ with six points. Finish was, well... Before we get to the finish, the squirm count was at five again. I didn't go over five, so be proud of me. Uh, the finish was like this. Juice uses the left hand of God on ZSJ, but of course he couldn't capitalize because ZSJ was working on that left hand the entire match. ZSJ locks in one of the nastiest submissions I have ever seen. It was so vicious, and Juice had no choice but to tap out. I can't even describe what it was. Like It, it seemed like he had his, he had his arm on his leg and he just pulling his arm and his shoulders was bent it, it was bad it looked like a contortionist act uh but zach saber jr wins uh he is now at eight points i think zsj wants to become u.s champ he kind of deserves it i mean he beat the champion so he should get a title shot i'm just saying next up ooh, ooh, ooh. they should have saved this for the main event kenny omega 12 points versus tomohiro ishii now, in one of the backstage comments, Ishii said he's going to be the one to bring Omega back to Earth since his head's in the clouds. And Kenny was really overconfident in this match. I mean, he was slapping Ishii on the top of the head. Ishii smiled. I'm going to put that up. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to show you guys a smile. You'll see it. There's a V-trigger to Lariat sequence. It was fire. Ishii... Like, almost came back to life, but got kicked in the face with that V-trigger. Um, the double stamp to the outside after a nasty V-trigger by Kenny. Nasty. Disgusting. And in a shocking twist, Tomohiro Ishii beats Kenny Omega, ending his streak and possibly delivering one of the best matches of the night. Uh, Omega's lip was really messed up. I don't know... What happened, but it required stitches. Ishii is at six. Do not tap Ishii on the head or you will get ishii and leave a bloody mess. Finally, the main event of night 14, Tetsuya Naito versus Kota Ibushi. Naito at 10, Ibushi at 8. So, Naito worked on Ibushi's knee a lot in this match. And in the A block preview, he also worked on his knee. Uh, but the finish... Uh, Naito hits Desno for a close two. Naito goes for a second one, but Ibushi reverses it into a reverse brain buster. He drops Naito right on his head, and I shouted CTE, because that's CTE. Uh, Ibushi then does Shinsuke Nakamura's Bamaye, including the pose. He does the yow thing and hits it uh, for a close two. Ibushi then Kamegoye's uh, Naito. Getting two more points. What a match. Ibushi's now at 10. Now, 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 let's talk about night 15. So, one thing happened in the pre-match uh, previews for the, the uh, block previews for the next night. Uh, Sonata and Naito were teaming up. And at the end of the match, Sonata 
And, you know, he's not been, you know, receptive to the fist bump. Uh, Naito puts his hand up. Sonata kind of goes away. Except this time, Naito throws Sonata into the turnbuckle. And Sonata flips over it, goes for a springboard kick, but he lands on his feet. And Naito does the LIJ pose. It's like looking at him like this, like, mm, good. You're going to give me your all. Wonderful. Can't wait. But now, let's get to the A block matches. Ballot Folly versus Yoshihashi. It, it, it's. it's Tim Dam Tonkins. I mean, it's Tim Dam Tonkins. And Yoshihashi is boring. Hey, F. Um, Hashi gets an arm bar on Fale, but Tama comes in with a chair and he just beats the crap out of Yoshihashi with a chair for a DQ. Yoshihashi wins. He gets four points. And then uh, Tama went after the fan. Like, he just held him up and just talking a bunch of noise to him. And that was it. I'm sure New Japan would have gotten in trouble if that fan would have got hurt. Uh, Minoru Suzuki. Versus Hangman Page, Suzuki at 8 points, Hangman Page at 4 points. This was a shocker because I thought Suzuki was going to win this one easy. But Hangman Page was fading in a sleeper by uh, Suzuki. He had a minute. But Suzuki went for the GSP. But Page at the last second reverses it into the right of passage for the win. Ha! Suzuki's really out now. He's really out. There's no way for him to get back in the G1. Page now has six points. Next up, Jay White versus Togi Makabe. Jay White with 12 points. Togi Makabe with four. Um, White pushes Makabe into red shoes. And he throws a chair at Makabe. And he hits the Blade Runner for the win. White is close to winning this thing because now White has 14 points. He's leading now. Tanahashi has 12, remember? But next up is Tanahashi versus Michael Elgin. And not to be outdone by uh, Jay White. Uh, Tanahashi with 12 points. Michael Elgin with 6. Uh, it was close. But Elgin hit a buckle bomb and went for the Elgin bomb. But Tanahashi reversed it into a small package for the win. Tanahashi ties with Jay White at 14 points. Two-way tie. And finally for the main event, Okada with 10 versus Evil with eight. The crowd is 50-50. Uh, Evil used uh, red shoes to deliver a magic killer on Okada. Uh, Evil did the Evil Maker, which is the Rainmaker by Evil. And, and Okada did everything is evil by Okada. From Okada to Evil. Very close to on both of those. But of course, Okada's new finish. Spinning Rainmaker into the OG Rainmaker for another win. That's Okada's sixth win in a row. His final challenge is Hiroshi Tanahashi. And I have a theory on that once we get to the block update. Night 16, B block. Let's get it. Juice Robinson with four points versus Tomohiro Ishii with six points. Uh, Ishii defeats Juice Robinson with a vertical brain buster for the win. Very physical match. Uh, Ishii now has eight points, and he has defeated the IWGP heavyweight a champion, the United States champion, and a never openweight champion. I think Ishii is owed a title shot or um, something. He's owed something. Hiroki Goto versus Zack Sabre Jr. Goto with six points, with Vern ZSJ with eight points. Uh, ZSJ defeats Goto with a European clutch. He moves, this moves ZSJ to 10. ZSJ now has defeated the never openweight champion and the United States champion. ZSJ is also in line for a title shot. I think he's going to be taking on Juice next. I don't know who's going to fight Goto. Maybe Yoshihashi. <laughs> Yoshihashi. Who wants to see that? <laughs> what? Tamatonga versus Kota Ibushi. Tamatonga with four points. Kota Ibushi with ten. Now Kota has to win. I still have a fighting chance in this. Tama and Ibushi fight in the crowd. And Ibushi gets the upper hand. And Ibushi runs into the crowd. He walks up to the second floor balcony. Hits a moonsault. Lands on his feet. And he also high-fived a fan. Pretty freaking awesome. You know what time it is? Well, I, I don't. I, I, just, I just don't know. It, it, well, young man, it's... Damn. Damn. Tongue in time. Dim damn talking time. Dim damn talking time. Ibushi goes for the Kamigoye, but Loyal grabs his leg. Kota kicks him off, but Tonga goes for the gun stun. Ibushi pushes Tama into the ref. Ugh, why did you do that? Kota, why, why, why? Kota hits a high kick, knocking Tama out, but Folly comes in and it's a lariat on Kota. 
And then comes Kenny Omega running out and hits a V-trigger on Fale. Omega eats a spear by Loa. Tama goes for another gun stun. Eats a lariat by Ibushi. Ibushi goes for Kamigoya but misses and eats a pop-up gun stun, which looked a little weird because Ibushi just landed on the ground first before the gun stun would happen. And Tama Tongo beats Kota Ibushi, therefore killing his dreams of even winning this, maybe. We'll get to that, the block update. His chances of winning this has diminished though. Loa hits a nasty power bomb on Omega and more damage was about to be done until Page, Hangman Page and Chase Owens make the save with chairs. So, Yano's music hits and Omega's still laid out from that power bomb by Loa. He's just kind of startled from it. So Yano is quickly taking off his entrance attire. And by the way, Yano has two points and Omega has 12. But he takes off his entrance attire and he's like, get out the ring, get out the ring, get out the ring. I got I got a pin because Chase and Hangman are checking on Omega. So they get out the ring and he goes for a quick pin. It's um, a two count, obviously. Uh, Yano takes off all the turnbuckle pads because screw being all nice. I'm going to win this match. And he throws Omega into three of them. But Chase saves uh, Omega from getting hit by the fourth by putting himself in the way and holding the turnbuckle up. Um, Yano suplex Kenny on to the turnbuckle pads. That was just a funny spot because it didn't hurt. It just padded his fall. Um, they had a turnbuckle fight. And Yano... Tied Omega to the young lion, Narita, and both of them are trying to get to the ring. And they do. Omega hits a lariat with Narita next to him. Boom, hits him with that. And then the finish came. Omega hits a V-trigger and is about to one-wing Angel Yano, but Yano grabs red shoes. And Kenny grabs Uno, who's also red shoes. And Yano hits a low blow on both of them and the chalk block on Kenny. Till... <laughs> Them damn Tongans! The damn Tongans, uh, they come back for more smoke. Folly and Loa beat down Chase and Page. And Tama hits a gun stung on Yano and Omega. And as ultimate insult to injury. Because you're the champion. And what do you look like losing to Yano? He pulls Yano over Omega. Throws the referee in. Rough counts it. And Yano has beaten Kenny Omega for two more points. Bringing his final total to four Omega is stuck at 12. This prevents him from winning the block. So now Naito has to beat Sonata and Zack Sabre Jr. to win the block and hope Kenny and Ibushi go to a draw. That's the only thing he can do. Naito, 10 points. Sonata with 8 points. Naito loses the match. It's over. It's over. It's just going to be a winner takes all between Ibushi and Omega. So... This match was pretty much what I expected. They both gave their all. It wasn't no BS. Like, I'm taking it easy on you because you were, we're teammates. Uh, the finish was simple. Sonata tried to hit an Asai DDT, but Knights were reversed it into a Destino to defeat Sonata for the win and 12 points. It is now for the LIJ salute. You know how they close the show with a little goodbye to the crowd. And... Uh, I thought this was nice. All the members of LIJ were there except for Hiromu, but Hiromu was there in spirit because Eva was holding his jacket. And Naito does the, the fist bump thing. Sonata does the fist bump. Eva does it, holds up uh, Hiromu's jacket. And Bushi does it. LIJ is still together despite the weirdness that was going on throughout this entire G1. I'm glad that Sonata didn't, uh, you know... Just say, no, I'm going solo. Because if this was WWE or any other company, he would have left. You know he would have left. And that's it for night 16. So it's time for a final block update. Listen, there's only three people who can win both uh, blocks. And the three people from A block that can win is Jay White, Tanahashi, and Okada. They, t Jay White and Tanahashi are tied at 14. Okada has 12. I have a theory that Tanahashi... And Okada is going to go to a draw. And Jay White's going to win his match, bringing him to 16 points. And he's going to win A block. I, I, I don't know why I feel like that's going to happen. But it just seems like the right thing to do. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know why Okada would win the block, have him beat Tanahashi with no problem at all. Seven wins in a row. That, that just doesn't seem right. It seems... Logical that it would be a draw between um, two of the top aces in New Japan and Jay White's sneaky self just 
wins the block because those two couldn't beat each other. It makes sense. And as for B block, it's Omega at 12, Coda at 10, and Naito at 12. So, we have a little bit of a conundrum. Now, if Naito beats Zack Sabre Jr., 14 points. Um, if Omega beats Coda, he'll have 14 points. This is a draw. We have another draw. So I'm unaware of what would happen at the draw. Would those two have a match, a rubber match to see who wins? Or does it get canceled out? I'm not sure. If Coda beats Omega, he'll have 12 points. Omega have 12 points. And if Naito somehow loses to Zack Sabre Jr., he'll have 12 points. It's a three-way tie. I don't know who's going to win B Block. All signs right now, how I'm feeling right now, it points to Naito because Jay White versus Naito would be perfect. They, they're, they're not the same, but they're kind of anti-heroes. And it, it, just, it just seems like... An anti-hero is going to win this thing. Even though Naito's the most popular star there, he's still an anti-hero by heart. Uh, Jay White, ultimate anti-hero. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jay White wins this entire G1 Climax to headline at Wrestle Kingdom. But that seems too soon, too. But, yeah, yeah. That's what I think is going to happen for A Block and B Block. Uh, if you want to know, everyone else is eliminated. If you want to know the final scores, Pangman Page has six. Uh, Evil has eight, Yoshihashi has four, Fale has six, Makabe has four, Elgin has six, Suzuki has eight, uh, Juice has four, ZSJ has ten, Yano has four, Sonata has eight, Tama has six, Goto has six, and Ishii has eight. Um, yeah. And that, by the way, there's a possible four way tie if ZSJ beats Naito, he'll get 12 points. Knights will have 12 points. And if Coda beats Omega, he'll have 12 points. I have no idea what you would do at that point. It would blow my mind if we would have to have a fatal four-way match to determine who's the winner of B-Block. Anyway, that's all for nights 13 through 16. Um, love you guys. Thank you for watching these. I hope these help for those who don't have the time to watch the G1 Climax. Uh, as for night 17 and 18, we're going to do those live. Uh, once I watch 17 and once I watch 18, we're talking about it live, right when it goes off. We're not going to wait. I'm not going to do a video like this. We're going to just talk about it live and see what happens from there. Tune in if you can. Maybe Saturday we can go live for 17 and Sunday we can go live for 18. If not Sunday, we'll go live Monday. But I'm MCZX. This is the Smart Kingdom. Thank you for watching and peace.